Hello, welcome back to Art Together Online from the Worcester Art Museum. Today, we're going to be inspired by mythical and magical beasts. So magic is something that can't be explained by science and is often found in fairy tales and myths or giant stories from the past that help explain natural phenomena or things that we didn't understand yet. So we are going to be looking at narwhals, and something else in our book today. Join me for Not Quite Narwhal by Jesse Sima. Not Quite Narwhal by Jesse Sima, Scholastic Incorporated. Kelp was born deep in the ocean. He knew early on that he was different from the other narwhals. His tusk wasn't as long as everyone else's. He had different tastes in food, and he wasn't a very good swimmer. Hmm. But his friends didn't seem to mind, so Kelp decided he wouldn't either. That is, until he was swept away by a strong current. I wish I were a better swimmer. Kelp found himself at the surface, closer to land than he'd ever been before. High up on a cliff, he spotted a mysterious, sparkling creature. It looked so familiar. It looked like, like Kelp. Kelp swam toward land as fast as he could, which wasn't very fast at all, hoping that he could catch up with the creature that looked just like him. When he finally reached the shore, Kelp felt a little bit anxious. He had never left the ocean. He was nervous about walking for the first time, but the land creatures made it look so easy. It wasn't. We can see him trying to walk like a crab, trying to jump like a frog. Eventually, he got the hang of it. Everything on land was strange and beautiful, but also kind of scary. Kelp began to think he might never find the creature that looked just like him, but as he stumbled out of the forest. Land narwhals! Actually, we're unicorns, and by the looks of it, so are you. Kelp had never heard of unicorns before. They taught him all sorts of new things about his tusk. We call them horns. Wow! They introduced him to unicorn delicacies, like a unicorn, and they showed him how to gallop. There was no doubt that Kelp was, in fact, a unicorn. He was having so much fun that he didn't want to leave. But then he remembered all of his friends under the sea. Kelp missed them terribly, so he said goodbye to the unicorns and returned to the ocean. Come back soon. Kelp swam toward home as fast as he could, which wasn't very fast at all, hoping that the narwhals would still like him now that he was a unicorn. When he finally arrived, Kelp had butterflies in his stomach. Welcome home, Kelp. Kelp took a deep breath and told his friends the news. It turns out I'm not a narwhal. Of course you aren't. I'm a unicorn. We all knew that. They took it quite well. Kelp was happy to be home, but now that he'd experienced life on land with the unicorns, he couldn't seem to forget them. Did he want to be a land narwhal with the unicorns or a sea unicorn with the narwhals? Kelp couldn't decide. But then he realized that maybe, just maybe, he didn't have to choose. At the very end, we can see. Help, saying mmm to a 
rhinoceros who says, I'm a unicorn, because he has a horn. So this book, Not Quite Narwhal, is very fun. It has some real creatures in it, like the narwhals, and a mythological or magic pretend animal, like the unicorn. We're going to look at some beasts and mythological creatures in artworks from the Worcester Art Museum. So let's go in. Come on. All right. So the first piece that we're going to be looking at is right here. This is from the Han Dynasty, and it's a handle in the shape of a beast mask with a small beer on top. And this is made in metal. So you can see here, this would actually be a handle, so something that somebody would, would grip onto. So it's pretty sturdy, but it has some roundness to the eyes and some really strong features or details that create sort of bumps or lines. And that beast looks very fierce. Even the small bear on top, which you can see right over here, has sort of a grimace or a growl. So this is a beast, so it could be something that would be magical or mythical. This um, piece sort of connects to the other ones in that we're using magical and mythical as our theme today. So let's go on to our next piece. This is the predella panel that is representing the phoenix rising from the flames. So this is uh, a test or a sketch drawing for what was planned to be a stained glass window. This is the piece, the pre-drawing, made with ink and colors um, and graphite and gouache, which is like a watercolor type paint, that the artist Claire Lighton made in the 1960s. We can see here that we have a, the bird, the phoenix, and we have some little flames along the bottom. These flames represent sort of the life cycle of the phoenix, which is a magical bird. This magical bird would grow very old, and then once it got so old, it would actually burst into flames. And then the flames would die down, and there'd be a pile of ashes. And then a new baby bird would come out of the ashes, and the cycle would continue like that. So baby bird out of the ashes, sort of getting older bird, really old bird, bird in fire, baby bird out of the ashes, all the way around over and over again. And the phoenix were supposed to have different magical things about them, like tears that could heal. Now, we have one more piece to look at from the Worcester Art Museum. So let's change it over to this one. So this is a gilt hairpin, gilt as in covered in gold, and it's also in the shape of a phoenix. So the filial, or sort of the end, the top of the hairpin, is a phoenix, and it also has, on a little chain, a hanging back. So the Worcester Art Museum has a good number of pieces that have phoenixes on it. This piece of jewelry was made in the Qing Dynasty from China, and it has beautiful detail. So again, we're talking about the phoenix, so the magical bird. Can you think of any other magical creatures or beasts? We've already seen the unicorn in our book, an undetermined beast on the door handle, two phoenixes from other pieces of artwork, the museum collection, and then there are other types like the griffin and a chimera, a basilisk, even a dragon, which many people have heard of. So, what we're going to do for our project today is we're going to create our own drawings or paintings of a mythical magical beast. Now you can pick to do a drawing or painting of one of your favorite mythical magical beasts that already exists, or you can create a brand new one. So, if you create a brand new one, think about what magical qualities or properties they would have. Do they have special horns or interesting powers? So let's pop on over to my art desk and we'll see the demonstration of me drawing my own mythical creature. 
So to create this piece, I took inspiration from an orchard flower that was right next to me, and I made an orchid chicken. I started using pencil to sketch everything out, then used colored pencils to add pattern, color, and interest. I used a lot of layers of colored pencils, and I used colors from both the chicken and the orchid flower. Add some fun by adding some details like T-Rex arms and stripes on the petals above the head. There are some funny teeth and then I just had a lot of fun adding patterns to my textures. At the very end I remembered that I wanted to give my orchid chicken its title right above its head. project is my mix and match. For this project you can print the template off as part of the PDF lesson that you can download. Cut along the black lines and you'll be ready to follow along. We're going to draw three animals where we can mix and match their heads, bodies, and legs. See I have already cut the slits in my paper and I start by drawing out my three animal designs in pencil my tabs back and forth towards the end to make sure that the heads, bodies, and legs all match around the same point. And after I've checked that they all match, I start adding my color. Now I used oil pastels here, but you could pick any drawing medium you'd like. With your first one, fold your flaps over and start coloring your second. Used some different colors for each of my animals, really to make them seem very different and pop from each other. I also made sure to add a bunch of little details, and I like outlining in black sometimes to really give good definition. Lastly, I made sure all the pieces folded well, and then I got to play with all of my creations. Thank you for coming today to the Art Together Online from the Worcester Art Museum. Now, what we did is we looked at these three pieces of art today, and then we also read Not Quite Narwhal by Jesse Sima. After that, we created our own artwork of a mythical beast, or you're going to next. I really hope that you enjoyed the book, the art, and the programs today. If you'd like to share your art with us, we would love to see it. You can post it online on our Facebook or Instagram, and then just do hashtag Wham art together. All right. Until next time, stay creative.